Taylor Canfield, and I'm a member of the Occupy Seattle working group, uh, media working group. And I'm also a journalist, and I'm proud to say that my article on the Occupy Seattle group is being published <laughs> in the Huffington Post today. <laughs> I'd like to thank Council Member Nick Licata for bringing this resolution to the council. It takes a lot of guts, and we really appreciate that. I'd like to thank the rest of the council for addressing these very, very important issues. And part of the reason that I think this resolution is really important today is because throughout the Occupy movements across the country, a lot of the corporate media has tried to dismiss us as being disorganized and directionless and ineffective. Um, even here in our local community, uh, Cairo Radio Shock Jock Dory Munson <laughs> compared us to rats and called upon the Seattle Central Community College to hire exterminators to get rid of us. Now, personally, I realize that he's a shock jock, he's not a journalist. But that kind of talk is very, very offensive to us because we're fighting some of the systems that have created genocide around the world and we do not appreciate people in the media talking about our movement that way. It's unfair. <laughs> we don't support hate speech, so we would assume that the media wouldn't either. Um, I'd also like to say that um, the participants in the Occupy movement have many different uh, branches. There are the people that are down on the streets that, like in Portland, are standing off with the police, trying to have their uh, peaceful protests. And one of the reasons, one of the most important things about this movement is that people want a permanent place to practice their First Amendment freedoms to uh, freedom of assembly and freedom of speech. That's a very major tenet to what we're doing here. But there's also millions of people around the country and around the world who support the Occupy movement, who are not necessarily down there in those tents day to day dealing with the cold. And I want to say that this resolution today can go a long way towards reminding people that we do have support from the community and we do have support from the city council. And I would like to thank you all for being so open minded and progressive and future minded that you want to take on these issues. And I would suggest that other cities go the same way, like Los Angeles has, and like the city of Seattle, and Eugene, Oregon, and other cities around the country. Thank you. Thank you. So we've got some struggles with uh, the next name. Is it, is it Justin Najar? Uh, close, uh, Nahar. Oh, Nahar, OK, I'm sorry. Followed by Michelle Shannon, I think, and then Sial Parin. Please correct me. Hi, uh, thanks for having us over. Um, <laughs> I'd just like to make a clarification, well, a couple things. Uh, I started the timer time going? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, just a little clarification about the divestment um, call to action. It, uh, the specific wording did not mention credit unions, it mentioned state and local banks. Credit unions would probably be great, I think we could all agree, but state and local banks were what was specified due to uh, rules about how much money cities are allowed to store their money in credit unions. We were, we were aware of that and prepared for it. Um, also, much has been said about education. Uh, I'd like to read something else Occupy Seattle passed. Uh, Occupy Seattle joins the struggle of students, faculty, and staff at Seattle Central Community College and other colleges and universities to defend public education and other social services against the vicious attacks coming from Olympia and Washington, D.C. The fight to defend education and social services is our fight. We say no to tuition hikes budget cuts and layoffs, we say cancel student debt, quality education is a right, not a privilege. It should be free. Unite to defeat budget cuts, uh, whoops, lost that one, and fight <laughs> instead of full funding for education and all other social services. That's something else we're about, um, along with the whole getting money out thing. Um, third thing, we're trying to hold an event this Friday. Um, Hip Hop Occupies is holding a uh, riots and decolonize event, and we've been having trouble getting a permit. Um, and I just if somebody could help out with that. Uh, <laughs> um, and then I'd also like to talk about the, uh, the events at Town Hall on Saturday. I'm sure some of us were there. <laughs> and uh, I think the most constructive way to look at that would be as more of a, uh, a lesson for all in the dynamics of power, which I think really cuts to the centrality of what this movement is about. The, uh, we weren't trying to decide whether or not we want to use the people's mic or microphones. The, it was really about how to make a decision. And that process is far removed from many people in this country. 
like in the Congressional Super Committee, that's going to make all the cuts pretty soon. <laughs> Thank you. My name is Michelle Shannon, and I am uh, with Working Washington today. Working Washington believes that income inequality and the lack of good jobs, note that word there, good jobs, uh, are the two biggest issues our economy faces. We appreciate the role that Occupy Seattle has played in bringing the issue of income inequality to the forefront. Thank you all for your hard work. Um, we also appreciate the council recognizing the Occupy Seattle's efforts. Um, furthermore, this resolution calls on the city to examine its banking practices. A necessary move to invest in banks that invest in local jobs, not in Wall Street banks that continue to hamper econo our, uh, economic recovery. Uh, we all know that when certain Wall Street banks that shall remain unnamed came into Seattle and took over WAMU, they took away 3,400 jobs here in Seattle. We also know that certain other Wall Street banks are uh, skimming off the top of welfare. They are taking 85 cent fees from EBT card users at the ATM. Is this the priority that we need to make as a city to allow Wall Street banks to continue these practices? Or should we pass this resolution and make a statement and a financial impact as a city and as uh, I think some of the other Occupy uh, comrades have suggested, uh, make an, um, an example for other cities to follow in our path? Thank you so much to the council and thank you especially to Council Member Nick Licata for presenting this.